placenta accreta spectrum covers a range of clinical conditions where the placenta is attached or embedded too deeply into the lining of the womb. The condition is rare and affects approximately 1 in 750 pregnant women. However, it is becoming more common due to the increased number of babies delivered by caesarean section. At the National Maternity Hospital in Dublin, between 10 and 15 women are diagnosed with placenta accreta spectrum every year currently. In order to understand placenta accreta spectrum, it is useful to understand the anatomy of the womb. The womb, also referred to as the uterus, consists of three layers. The endometrium, which is the innermost layer, the middle muscular layer called the myometrium, and the outer layer, which is the uterine serosa. When an egg is fertilized, it begins a five-day journey traveling from your fallopian tube down into your uterus. As it travels, your progesterone hormone levels rise, which help prepare the uterine lining for pregnancy. Implantation is a process in which the developing embryo, the blastocyst, makes contact with the uterine wall and remains attached to it until birth. The inner cell mass of the blastocyst forms the embryo and the outer cell mass becomes the placenta. In a normal pregnancy, Implantation happens high in the womb, where the endometrium is at its thickest. The placenta is a temporary organ that connects the unborn baby to the mother via the umbilical cord. It provides oxygen and nutrients to the baby and removes waste products. In a normal pregnancy, the placenta will separate from the lining of the womb after the baby has been delivered. Placenta accreta spectrum occurs when the placenta adheres to the lining of the womb and does not separate spontaneously after the baby is born. Placenta accreta spectrum consists of three main conditions. Placenta accreta, placenta increta, and placenta percreta, depending on how deeply the placenta invades into the womb. Normally, the placenta attaches to the endometrium. However, in placenta accreta, the placenta grows beyond the innermost layer, the endometrium, and attaches to the muscle. In placenta increta, the placenta grows beyond the endometrium and deeply invades the muscle. Rarely, the placenta can attach and grow so deeply into the lining of the womb that it grows right through the outermost layer of the womb and impacts other organs, such as the bladder. This is called placenta percreta. Placenta accreta spectrum usually develops in women with one or more known risk factors. Women who have a low-line placenta, a condition called placenta previa, and a history of previous caesarean section are at highest risk of developing the condition. Where the placenta is close to the cervix but not fully covering it is referred to as placenta previa minor. Where the cervix is completely covered by the placenta, it is known as placenta previa major. While most women with placenta accreta spectrum have a history of caesarean section, it can also occur in a first pregnancy or if a woman has had no previous caesarean sections. The higher the number of previous caesarean sections, the greater the risk. Other risk factors include infertility treatments such as IVF, previous surgery for miscarriage or DNC, having had previous removal of a uterine fibroid, a surgical procedure known as a myomectomy.
An ultrasound scan is used to identify women at risk of placenta accreta spectrum. In the National Maternity Hospital, Dublin, 9 in 10 cases are diagnosed during pregnancy. Approximately 1 in 10 women will not be diagnosed during pregnancy and the diagnosis is only made either at the time of caesarean section or following a vaginal delivery, where the placenta does not separate from the lining of the womb. Vaginal bleeding is the most common symptom, but not all women will experience this. Once you have been diagnosed with placenta accreta spectrum, you will most likely be admitted to hospital as a long-stay patient. Diagnosis before delivery is important, as it allows the appropriate management and treatment plan to be put in place. Sometimes an MRI will be arranged. While ultrasound is the best test to examine the placenta, an MRI allows your doctor to get more detailed images of the relationship between the placenta and other organs surrounding the womb, such as the bladder. Your team of doctors will use both the ultrasound and MRI images together to plan your surgery. Both ultrasound and MRI are safe during pregnancy and do not harm your baby. Often women are prescribed iron to optimise their levels before delivery. During your hospital stay, you and your baby will be monitored closely. You will be cared for by a team of doctors and midwives with specialist expertise in placenta accreta spectrum. In most cases, your baby will be delivered a number of weeks before your due date. Usually, the delivery is planned to take place between 34 to 36 weeks to avoid the need for emergency delivery. In rare individual cases, earlier delivery may be necessary. Doctors make an individual decision for each woman based on a variety of factors. Where a diagnosis of placenta accreta spectrum is suspected, your baby will be delivered by caesarean section. To prepare for surgery, you will have a spinal or epidural anaesthetic or a full general anaesthetic. During a spinal or epidural anaesthetic, an injection is given into the back and you are numb from the chest down. This means you will be awake for the delivery of your baby. During a general anaesthetic, you will be asleep for the delivery. Many women prefer to be asleep for the entire operation. This may be necessary in some cases to provide adequate pain relief or if heavy bleeding is anticipated. Before the operation, an arterial line will be placed in your wrist, as well as a number of other drips in your arm. In some cases, a central line is inserted into your neck. A central line is a long, thin, flexible tube placed in the neck through which medicines, fluids or blood products can be given. A central line may stay in for a number of days if required. Ureters are tubes that carry urine from the kidney to the bladder. In some cases, if the placenta has invaded very deeply into the muscle, there may be an increased risk of damaging the ureters as they lie very close to the womb. To reduce the risk of injury, a small tube may be placed in the ureters to protect them during the surgery. These may be removed at the end of the operation or can be left in for a few weeks afterwards. As the risk of bleeding is high during surgery for placenta accreta, it may be necessary to place balloons in the blood vessels which supply blood to the womb. These balloons reduce blood loss during surgery. They are usually inserted through a blood vessel in the groin before surgery by a specialist doctor, inflated during the operation and removed at the end of surgery. Approximately four in five women will have an elective planned delivery. In some circumstances, an emergency delivery is necessary. This occurs in approximately one in five cases. The most common reason for an emergency delivery is when women start bleeding or get labour pains before their scheduled delivery date. A planned delivery is safer for both mother and baby as it minimises the risk of heavy bleeding. Prior to delivery, you will be given steroids which help to mature your baby's lungs. The surgery is generally performed through a large midline incision on the skin from above your belly button to the bikini line.
The baby will be delivered through an incision on the womb away from the placenta and the placenta is left undisturbed. This minimises the risk of bleeding. Your baby may need to spend some time in the special care unit. The length of the stay will depend on how early the baby is born. In placenta accretus spectrum, once the baby has been delivered, the placenta stays firmly attached to the womb and there is a high risk of bleeding if attempts are made to remove the placenta. Therefore, often the safest option is to remove the womb, an operation called a hysterectomy, immediately after the baby is delivered with the placenta to minimise the risk of blood loss. Approximately four in five women will require a hysterectomy. In cases where you remain awake for the delivery, you will often be put to sleep while the hysterectomy is completed. The womb, cervix and fallopian tubes are removed. Your ovaries remain. Heavy bleeding may require the need for a blood transfusion. Four in ten women will require a blood transfusion. In order to reduce the need for a blood transfusion, your own blood is transfused back to you in a process called cell salvage. While most women with a diagnosis of placenta accretus spectrum will require removal of the womb, in some select cases other treatment options are available. The placenta may have grown deeply into the lining of the womb only in one small area. The rest of the placenta may not be stuck. In these rare cases, this small area of the muscle can be removed along with the placenta. The womb is then preserved and closed in a similar fashion to a caesarean section. If the placenta starts to separate by itself, a gentle attempt to remove the placenta can be made. However, this is often associated with heavy bleeding and will only be attempted if the placenta separates naturally. In a small number of cases, the placenta can be left inside the womb, where it may absorb over a few months. This is not standard practice, and six in 10 women will need a hysterectomy at a later date due to heavy bleeding or infection. Infection of the wound following surgery. If an abscess develops, this may require surgical drainage. Following delivery of your baby, you will most likely be admitted to the high dependency unit for close monitoring and observation for 24 hours. During this time, you will have a catheter in the bladder and may have a number of drips in your arms and neck. Where the surgery has been uncomplicated and the blood loss minimal, you may only need to spend three to four nights in hospital after the delivery. However, if there was a complication or heavy bleeding, admission to intensive care may be necessary. Your baby will usually need admission to the special care unit for support with breathing and feeding. This means that you will be separated from your baby following delivery. However, where your surgery has been uncomplicated, you might be able to visit your baby in the special care unit a number of hours after birth or the next day. After your surgery, there are a number of different pain management medications available to you. It is important to take pain medication regularly to prevent breakthrough pain. Women who have experienced placenta accretus spectrum strongly advise effective pain relief management. Once you've been discharged home, you may need to take iron. To minimise the risk of developing a blood clot, you should wear compression stockings for six weeks and take daily blood thinning injections as prescribed by the hospital. The surgical wound will take approximately three to six weeks to heal. Pelvic floor physiotherapy is recommended. Women may have spent a long time in hospital before their surgery and may go home before their baby has been discharged from the special care unit. So this can be a very challenging time for women and their families. 
In comparison to women who have undergone the cesarean section for other reasons, women with placenta accreta spectrum are more likely to experience ongoing pain and low mood for a number of months following their surgery. A postnatal review will be arranged in the hospital six weeks after surgery for a checkup. Follow-up and support services are available in the hospital and through the hospital support group, Placenta Accruta Ireland, to address any ongoing concerns.